Hello. Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up Corsair IQ for my computer. A lot of people like how I get my fans to rotate and spin all the cool pretty lights. So, first off, let me make sure you can actually see my mouse. Because I imagine that that would be uh, pretty important. All right, so first off, what you're gonna gonna want to do is go to your settings and make sure that IQ has actually been updated and is fully updated. Because if not, you are not gonna have all of the features and everything that I may or may not have. Second off, I would go through your list and check for all your updates on all of these. So it'll just say that it's already been done. So, you know, go through, make sure that everything's updated. I have a ton of Corsair products, so, you know, I'm not really too worried about it because I keep all my stuff up to date. I'm checking it at least once every couple of weeks. So I have a... 360 millimeter rad over here on the side, uh, over there. And that is being controlled by the Elite Capellix, which if I click on here, then it brings this up. And then I scroll down to lighting effects. Now for the First one, I have the lighting link. I have it set as a static color. This is going to control every single one of my lights on Corsair products. So every single thing that I have up here is controlled by lighting link. So all of those colors are all the same static purple. And this is my color code if you want to duplicate it. Then for the second one, you go into the lighting link section and you choose static color. And then for the arc, this one is under the predefined. And I mean, they have a ton of different variables and different kinds. This is my color code. And the arc plays on top of the purple because of the way that I have it stacked. So if I drag this one below it, now you can't even see it. Bring this one above it, and you got that. Now if I turn this one completely off, now you can see purple's not even on there. Now, the arc I had to set up specifically on each different part. So I had to set it up on the AIO. And then I also had to open up the lighting node core. So I had to then redo it on here. And I did the exact same code. The RAM I have set up to do pretty much like a, uh, almost like a drop pattern. I know that you can't really see it on the camera facing the computer, but I have it set up so that I get a slight bit of white at the beginning of the teal streak. If you don't do that, it actually really doesn't look good at all. So if you plan on doing that, I would suggest going that route. So I liked having this one too but it doesn't look that great on this. And then also, if your lighting link doesn't look the same among every single individual one of your Corsair products, I go through and I make a individual solid color. So you go into custom and you can either do solid or static, it doesn't matter. And I don't even pay attention to what the color code is or anything. 
I'll just take this and slowly drag it to where it needs to be on the color wheel so that you can actually see like real time what it's going to look like so that it does match up with all of your things. I also had to do that on my mouse, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the mouse I had to do a static color. And then my keyboard, I have it set up as a static color because the lighting link was almost pink on my keyboard. So I had to change that to a static color. And then I did the visor on the front here. And then I have the sides just going up. Now, the one thing that actually makes a huge difference is when you're doing the visor and stuff like this. Let me go back to the fans. So, say you wanted to do mm, pretty much if you go into here, you know, you set your colors, you know, say I want green and red. No, red. All right, so that is only on the AIO right now, but if I do this and select every LED, then, okay, so you see how it's only showing on my AIO right now? Now, if I do, say, the velocity at, I don't know, say 80, I know it's going to be way too high, but now it's running through all of my fans. All right, quick editor tips. Now, I didn't think about this when I was recording it, so, you know, that was, you know, my own problem. But one of the things that I uh, can also tell you is that if you wanted to use this wave on, say, all of your fans, so if you wanted to do these three on this side, Sorry if you can't really see my cursor. Do the one in the back, the AIO, the ones on the top, and the ones on the bottom. If you wanted to do all of them, now you go to whatever thing up here your fans are connected to. You can set up numerous of them and only select one or two fans at a time. So that way you can have a lower velocity and a bigger or smaller tail, depending on what you like and how you want it to look. Don't think that, you know, everything is 100% set in stone, that, you know, this is the only way that you can do it, because you can set up so many different variants of this that it's absolutely unbelievable. So, wish you the best of luck, have fun, enjoy the rest of the video. So, normally I have it set to, like, not even 30. Okay, so that actually isn't high enough. Okay, so we'll say green, yellow. Um, the ripple, well, actually to make it more noticeable, I'll do yellow and red. Velocity, we'll do 30. And you can see it running along my fans in the lower right hand side here. Now, as you bring the num the velocity number up, so say I bring it to 80, now it's going to move faster, but it's going to go further. And your tail is going to be how many LEDs are on while it's doing its pattern. So as it's running through everything, it'll keep 10 LEDs on at a time, and then it'll move on and keep continuing with 10 on at a time. The hardest part is trying to get your velocity perfect for what you want it at. Get your lighting link set up first. Figure out exactly the color that you want to be the static background. Then go through, match the colors on everything else that you want. And then I would go on to your fans and set up the arc 
which like I said, it's in the predefined area. You click on arc and then I have it set so that I control the colors and you can change the inner ring to, you know, make that one spiral as red or as, I don't know, what would be good for you to see on the camera here. White definitely doesn't help. There you go, you can see that a little bit on the camera. Pretty self-explanatory once you figure out about what you want and what style you have to go for. But you'll set up the arc on here and then you just simply click on these, set it up on here again, and you're done. Fairly simple. I hope this helped and, you know, I have fun making cool designs. I will see if I can upload my whole entire setup, like my whole preset, so to speak, so that you can have a download link in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.